Thank you, thank you, thank you. The drawing for the Afghan will be at the end of the service. Somebody will take home a American flag handmade, collectible, snuggable, lovable Afghan, okay? Made handmade, hand crocheted by Lori. Wave Lori. How about that? She's done that faithfully for many years, and we bless her for that. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for devoting your attention to godly things, to um, taking care of your soul, making God a priority, and caring as much about your soul as you do your natural body, loving God's word more than you love natural food. Amen? See, as long as God and the Bible and prayer and tithes and offerings and church attendance, as long as those parts and elements of your life are your leftovers or low priority to you, you won't have the benefit of all that God has for you. It's only when you make a priority, number one, the giving of your first fruits, the time in the morning with the Lord. It's only that you take time in the first day of the week to make an effort to be in God's house and be with God's people and serve the Lord in his service, it's only then that you can really get hold of all that God has for you. As long as it's just another pastime or a hobby to you, the church and you and your family will remain spiritually anemic and weak. You won't see the miracles of the New Testament by making God just what's left over in your life. And if we have time, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get there. And if we can work it out, and if we feel good, and if, 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 and if we get all of our work done, then we'll maybe come. Amen? So thank you for making him your number one. Paula said it earlier, everybody needs a champion. And we declare him to be our champion. Amen? I don't know how many years of service there was lined up here today, but it was a lot. And one of the greatest armies that have ever been put together has been the, the different branches of our armed forces of this great United States of America to keep peace, and declare democracy, and provide freedom around the world. We have freed more people, opened doors for more of the gospel to be preached than any other country that's ever lived. We are a government founded under God, for the freedom of what we are doing in this room today, and I'm thankful to all of our veterans for doing that. And uh, go ahead, it's all right. Amen. But we are called to an army of a far higher purpose. The army of the living God. Amen. Upon this rock, he said, I will build my church, 
and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The implication is there is war. And if you'll fight with me, the Lord says, nothing, not even the gates of hell will prevail. You can't lose. You're a winner. The only army that's ever guaranteed to bring home a victory every time is the church of the living God. And you are called to that army. You say, well, I'm just not going to fight. Well, then you're going to lose. You can't just not play in this game. You're, there, there's no middle ground. Choose you this day. Who will you serve? God said, you're either for me or you're just in the way. No. You're either for me or you're just dead weight. No. You're either for me or you're straddling the fence, middle of the road. No, he didn't give you that option. You're either for me, you're doing battle against the forces of hell on my side, or you are against me. How long will you stand and make the decision to work against God? Look at somebody and say, we're not doing that. We're not working against God. We're going to work for God. I'm all in. Sign me up. Thank you. Thank you for keeping Israel in your prayers. We pray for them every day. They're a part of us. We're a part of them. I know it's 7,000 miles or whatever away, but, you know, they're a few hours on a different clock. We don't see it in our face every day, but there's anguish, there's war, there's turmoil, there's hurt, there's families destroyed. Keep them in your prayers. Thank you for voting on Tuesday. Don't forget, set alarms or whatever in your phone or however you have to do it and make that happen. Hey, what these men fought to have, we will lose it so fast it'll make your head swim if we don't get out there and speak up and let them know, hey, we have a voice. We care. We the people. Amen? Amen. This is not... This, country don't belong to D.C. This country don't belong to politicians sitting around tables and whining and dining and being paid off and all this stuff that's going on. And that's not who it belongs to. It belongs to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone had uh, use of our facility this week and they said, thank you for making our church available to us. I said, I love the way you said that. Amen? Because it is your church. Amen? Now, don't take that chair home with you, Ginger. But it's your chair. It's your chair. We might need it tomorrow. So, you know what I'm saying. Leave it here and share it with others. And a, another thank you to, to you guys. I'm just so grateful. My heart's just full. And the month of October, they, someone lovingly placed as pastor appreciation. And I just can't imagine any pastor on planet Earth serving in ministry any more appreciated than Paula and I by you loving people. I'm telling you, cards, <laughs> letters, <laughs> notes, texts, yeah. gifts, like... I've got a couple of gift cards in my wallet that are just itching to be used. It, and so many, many, many loving uh, things you have done for us, the flowers and appreciation, not the least of which is your prayer covering over us, keeping sickness and discouragement and all that and and then you just pour your words out there telling people how great this place is and you just don't know what that means you're you're doing a a lot when you do that you're making great deposits into the community 
So two weeks ago, and I know what time it is, so I hope y'all are okay, because, you know, um, this is important, amen? Honoring our veterans, we do that on purpose, because it's important. I don't know what you're doing this afternoon, but I hope it's really important if you have to leave before we're done here. Amen? Because this is important. So if you'll turn in your Bible to 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, I want to recap the message from two weeks ago. I preached a message called Sin's Expiration. Sin's Expiration. I taught and preached that no matter what sin it is that's got you bound, it's going to expire. For the wages of sin is death. And uh, how, how many of you look forward to Friday afternoon at work? Anybody look forward to Friday afternoon? I used to get excited on Monday morning about 7.30. I was excited about Friday afternoon. <laughs> and when I punched that clock punching in, I was excited about punching out. It's like, I'm gonna, in eight hours, I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to wave at you. Amen. I get excited. Sin's going to expire, and I'm excited about sin's end, the time that it ends in your life and everybody else's life. So today I want to take it another, another step forward with that, and I'm going to speak to you as uh, briefly as I can possibly do it. From 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. In the Passion Translation, if they have that. Are we beginning to sound like those who speak highly of themselves? Do you really need letters of recommendation to validate our ministry like others do? Do we really need your letter of endorsement? Of course not. For your very lives are our letters of recommendation. See, we don't have to, we don't have to defend what the naysayers and the skeptics are saying about this church, they'll always think we're weird and, and that's okay. Because now the third generation of river people are being raised up. And now there are lives that reflect and prove what God can do in your life if you'll let him. Your lives are our letters of recommendation. One, one translation says, you are a living Bible. You are a living epistle or letter to the world. And that's what I want to talk about today. Permanently engraved on our hearts, recognized and read by everybody. As a result of our ministry, you are living letters written by Christ, not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not carved onto stone tablets, but on the tablets of tender hearts. You and only you can control your eternal destination. Regardless of what you choose to believe or what you have been taught by society, there is an eternity to be had. This is not all there is to life. There is a way that seems right to man, but the Bible says the end of that way is destruction. The narrow road is the road Jesus pointed out and led us into. The broad road, the everybody's doing it road, the I want to follow the crowd road, that road is broad, but it is the way to death and destruction and eternal torment. So we'll go to James chapter 1, and we'll break this down for you today. James 1, and we'll start with verse 22, New Living Translation here. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. 
and then you see yourself, you walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Anybody want to be blessed? Pay attention. I think that's pretty simple. Pay attention. Do what you're told. God will bless you. Sounds like a great plan. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. So let's look at Romans chapter 6. I feel like two weeks ago I told you a little bit of the what, and today I want to help you with the how. Look at somebody and say, how? How in the world are we going to do this? Well, he encourages us and admonishes us in Romans chapter 6, one of our favorite passages, says, well, then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Number three, or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism, just as Christ was raised from the dead by his glorious power of the Father. Now also may we live new lives. That's what happens. You get baptized, you just don't live your old life. Hello. I mean, you can kind of wear some of the same clothes and you can drive the same car and live in the same house. You might even work the same job. But the stuff that used to turn you on, the stuff that used to get you excited and fired up and, and anxious for Friday night, just, it just doesn't, doesn't fit. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't seem like the thing to do anymore for some reason. I had a testimony come to me while we were worshiping. Somebody said, come here, i got to tell you, I've been praying. Somebody was struggling with alcoholism, and I've been praying for them. And I got a phone call last night, and for two weeks... They haven't touched it. Matter of fact, yeah. Said, my prayer was that it wouldn't taste good anymore. And I got the phone call and they said, I just don't like it. Just don't want it. God answers prayer. Amen. Since we've been united with him in his death, we also will be raised from, to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. Listen, you can try to sin, but it's lost its power. It isn't going to do for you what it used to do for you. It's lost its power over you. Yeah, I mean, you can choose and go do dumb stuff, but it don't have the power it once had. It just don't. It's the most amazing thing. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we'll also live with him. We're sure of this because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> Somebody say, it's game on. you got to make a choice every day. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to be a living word. When you were baptized, you chose sides. you got to wake up every morning grateful and determined. Now, you got a white piece of paper there, but don't write on it yet. If you've already written on it, you can either erase it or just repent. It's okay. 
But listen, I just, real quick, real quick, how many of you like quick? I, I real quick wrote down a few things that you could start doing, thinking about, putting on your list of things to do. How many of you have a, li- a to-do list? All right, it's like uh, pick up the dry cleaning, uh, don't forget to stop and get eggs and bread, right? Do two loads of laundry, vacuum the guest room, you know, get in your little list, right? I want you to add to your list. Oh, pastor, oh, <laughs> my goodness. I can't even keep up with the list I got. Well, I'm going to give you some stuff that's super easy and real quick that you can do just real quick. Number one, give thanks. Number two, love God. Number three, love your neighbor. Number four, help others in need. Number five, heal the sick. Don't write them down. You, you, you got your own stuff. I mean, you, you make up your own. This is not, I'm not teaching you something. I'm just stirring you up, okay? I don't, I don't even have these. Yeah, I, I can print it out for you, but pray in the Spirit. That's good to have on your list. Wash the saints' feet. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Support the work of the ministry. Serve in your church. Encourage your brothers and sisters. Check up on a shut-in. This is how we do the Word. We're doing living epistles. You're going to do what the Word said do. This is stuff the Word said do. Call someone you haven't seen in a while. Send a text message to encourage your mentor or your pastor. Smile at someone who looks weary or angry in public. Open a door for someone. That doesn't take very long. You're not going to be late if you hold the door for them and don't charge in and slam the door and hurry up and get your next in. You're not going to, that's not going to be eternally damaging to you to slow down a little bit. Let someone in in traffic. We're not racing. The first one to the light, they're only going to be 30 or 40 feet ahead of you wherever you're going. Let them be the first one to the light. Slow down. Speak a blessing over a child. Let an el- Listen to an elderly person for a few minutes. Put, on, put, put the shopping cart away and grab another one that's stray out there that might damage somebody's nice car and paint job and put it away too. Be the word. Live the word. Okay? Live the word. Once in a while, just double the tip. Say, oh, I tip according to the service. Well, what if that server got served divorce papers the night before? What if that server just found out that her child is going to be in the hospital for six weeks? You don't know. Say, well, they they weren't very nice. So you are all the time? I mean, come on, show some grace, right? Hey, I'm a grumpy old man sometimes. Just just throwing it out there. Be the word. Be the Bible. Pay it forward at the drive-thru. Pick up that trash on the floor that you noticed. Just go ahead and pick it up and put it in the trash can. So, oh, I might get germs. Oh, wow. You got more germs on your hands already. Come on. Are you kidding me? You ain't going to die. Get out of fear and get in faith. And be the word. Be a living light and an example to the world. We're the child, children of the king. You think Jesus looked at trash and said, I better not pick that up. I might get germs. I'm just saying. He touched lepers. Get get real. Be the word. Okay, so now I've got seven things you can write down. Are you ready to write? Not on your paper. Not on that paper card. Not on the card. No, 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 no. Get your own paper. (laughs) Oh, you can use the card if you want to. Number one, what this teaches us in James chapter one is to look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. The Bible is your mirror. You can't fix everything just by 
letting others tell you what's wrong. You say, well, nobody ever told me that that was sin in my life. Okay? H how long, I mean, y you know, if you've got a misplaced hair, you know, you can, sometimes people will tell you, sometimes they won't. Or that embarrassing smudge on your cheek. How long are you willing to walk around in public with that big spot on the seat of your pants? Right? Have you, have you ever looked in the mirror and then looked at your friend and go, why didn't you tell me I had broccoli in my teeth? why we need the word of God we need the mirror amen how many of you have a mirror in your house amen you'd be smart to look in it right amen we'll all be blessed if you look in the mirror my wife catches stuff you know I look in the mirror and I'm like like the fawns you know good she goes come here let me fix that hair number two Change must first start with you. When you look in the mirror, you, you can't fix everybody, but you can fix you. There's a lot of people out there doing a lot of crazy things that really drives me nuts, and I don't like it, but I can't fix everybody. But what I can do is stand in front of my mirror and fix me. Amen? Reading the Bible for introspection and reflection is so often missed. A lot of people, we, we read the Bible to prove others wrong, or we read the Bible to find comfort or peace, and that's perfectly fine. We read the Bible to strengthen and encourage and build us up, but we also must learn to read the Bible as a mirror to reflect to us the things we need to grow in. Read it in a manner that says, Lord, show me where I'm wrong. How many of you love to be wrong? You just... You just can't wait until your spouse points out where you were wrong. I'm, i got to put my hand down. <laughs> I'm a bad example. I don't like to be wrong. I told Sean this week we were working on the sound. I said, I said, when I know I'm right, I'm right. Anybody else have a problem with that? You, you know something and you're like, I know that's right. Well, it may not be right just because you know it, right? Right. Everybody say right. Just the word will remind you of how good God is and how far we have to go to be like him. The more I read about Jesus, the more I realize I still got, I still got a lot of work to do. Amen? When I look in the mirror and I look Paul Bishop in the eyes, I go, boy you got a long way to go. Amen? That's how the Word does. But number three is the good news. The law will make you free. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. If you see the law as bondage, then you haven't truly experienced God's grace and forgiveness. You don't understand the Word of God if you think it's just a bunch of rules that you can't ever measure up to. That was what the law was to the old group. The old covenant was just a bunch of rules nobody could obey. So they perverted it. They added to it. They made up the rules as they went. Certain groups got away with practically murder, and other groups couldn't do anything without getting chastised. It just got all corrupt and pitiful and a mess. But Jesus came and flipped it on us, and now the law makes free. Now the law paints your life in a beautiful tapestry of grace and mercy and love and peace and and we can deal those things out to the lost and hurting world because of what the law will do psalms david said in 119 and 162 i rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil i hate and abhor lying but thy law do i love seven times a day do i praise thee because of thy righteous judgments great peace have they who love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Verse 166, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. 
I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm in love with thy law. One place he said it's like honey. Anybody here like honey? I'm a pretty good honey. Molasses, honey. I love those sweet, sweet things that God made. Number four. Doing the word brings the blessing. You'd be crazy not to do this. Keep doing the word. The word blessed is in the Bible 430 times. The word blessed. You're blessed when you keep his law. God is blessed and he loves to bless. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth will prosper. Why? Because he's the doing word. He's the living word. You're the living epistle Red of all men. Number five, real quick, control your tongue. Whew, you can say, oh, me. If you're sitting like I am, if your toes are feeling a little pinched. Oh, me. I'll just tell you right now, I'm just going to be real. My tongue is a problem. I mean, it, I just have a problem with the old tongue. Stuff just sneaks out. And I'm trying to reel it in. I wish I had a fishing line with a hook <laughs> that would catch my tongue about four feet past my mouth and I could reel it back in. And I'm like, oh, Ooh. oh, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I wasn't lying to you. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that, you know. The wise man said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. James said, you're just kidding yourself if you claim to be religious and can't bridle your tongue. He goes on in, ch in chapter 3, and I, I won't read it all, but you can read it when you get home. Uh, he says, a good, a, a fountain can't produce good and sweet water and and bitter water you you can study that when you get home number six care for others he tells us in james one pure religion and undefiled in the sight of god means caring for the orphans and the widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you wow wow oh we got to care for people man we can't lose our compassion we we, if you want to be the living word, you gotta, you got to help somebody. I love to help people. I really, really love. I mean, if I see someone stranded, if I see someone struggling with something, I want to help them, I want to help them, I want to help them. I get, let me do it, let me do it, let me help you. I can fix that. I can help you with that. A lot of you people are real helpers. You just love to help. I, I, yeah, I got it, I got it. I got just the tool for that. I'll be right back. Just love it. Just feels good to help and care for somebody else. If, you, if you've got that compassion, if you've got that gift, you should be doing that. And if you don't, find a way to do it. No matter who you are, it's not for just certain people. The gospel is void if it doesn't lead us to helping and healing. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The transformed life is a life giving out. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's not just imaginary. That's not just some, you know, fancy thought and beautiful poetry. No, what flows out of your being is life-giving. And I just don't like to be around people that just suck the life out of you. I don't like to be around negative people. I don't like to be around people that drag me down. I want to be around fountains, rivers, gushers. Ha! I love gushers. Look at somebody and say, be a gusher. Let, 
let Bill George tell you about visiting Old Faithful. He's got a story. You ought to hear that story before you go home. It's awesome. Let me ask you a question, and, and we're almost to number seven. What if Christianity was really known by their love for one another? What if Christianity was the first place the world turned to for help? Just write it down. Find a way to give every week. And I'm not talking about returning your tithe, putting it in a box. You, you drop your tithe in, and then you check that off, and then you go the rest of your week living selfish and self-centered, and da 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 That's not going to cut it. Amen? Find a way to give. Number seven. This is the last and probably the most important. He said, keep yourself unspotted or from worldly influences. King James says, unspotted from the world. Don't, you gotta, you've got to do this. See, we got angels for things. We've got, you know, spirits working on our behalf. We've got prayers doing a lot of things. The church does a lot of things. The pastor does a lot of things. The worship team does a lot of things. But the one thing that I can't do is keep you from worldly influences. Grandma's prayers all by themselves can't keep you from worldly influences. James said, keep yourself. Look at somebody and say, you need to keep yourself. You need to keep yourself. You're the keeper of yourself. You decide whether worldly influences get in or not. I don't come to your house and turn on your TV and pick a channel out and say, now you watch that all night long. You binge watch that show right there. Right? I, I can't come over and, and decide. People want the pastor to decide. Pastor, you think there's anything wrong with this? I get asked that a lot. Well, that's a, that's a good question. I'm not making fun of you. But I can't fix all of that. I can't make up a list of games you can play and stuff you can eat and da 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 da, -da. We don't have a rule book. You keep yourselves unspotted. Keep yourself out of the worldly influences. If you've got a problem with a certain habit or a certain bend to do certain things that are sinful and against the Word of God, stop going to places where that's what the people are doing. If your problem is bowling, you certainly don't hang out and eat lunch at the bowling alley every day. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with bowling. If I knew how to do it, I would do more of it. But if that's your problem, hello, if you have a problem with buying too many new cars, then drive by the car lot, don't go sit in them. Hello. Amen? I mean, some things are really, really simple. To me, I mean, it's like, Papa Pastor, I just have a real problem with da 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 da. Well, what are you doing hanging out over there? What are you doing inviting them people to your house? Come on. Stop it. So let's make a practical application. Now take your little white card. If you've already written those seven things on it, that's fine because. I'm going to let you pick one. So many souls have been won to Jesus just simply because somebody lived a Christian life in front of them. That's all they need. They just, I don't know if you ever saw that old Christian film called Ordinary Guy, but there was a film made in the 70s or something. It's a poor quality Christian film. But the story was amazing because this guy didn't believe in God, but he said, if I ever meet somebody, he read the Bible, and he said, if I ever meet somebody that's living that, I'll believe. And he finally met a guy. Took him way too long because he, he tried church, and that, that didn't seem to fit what the Bible was saying. He was like, they're doing this, and the Bible says this. He couldn't make it match, but finally he found a guy. 
that was li- an ordinary guy that was living the Christian walk. And it turned him around and he became a great evangelist for the Lord and, and built up the kingdom and worked and did the good things of the Lord. So out of these things, if you're going to be the only Bible that many will ever read, pick one thing that I listed on the seven and circle it on your paper, or if you haven't written on your paper like a good obedient student, now write it on your paper. The one thing, the one thing out of seven, pick one of them and write it on your paper. It could be looking in the mirror every day. It could be changing yourself first. Michael Jackson wrote the words, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could have been any clearer. Y'all, y'all wonder why I know Michael Jackson tunes, don't you? <laughs> I preached a message called Man in the Mirror about 35 years ago. It was one of the first messages I ever preached in public. But that's a good lyric, good, good words right there. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. If I can get him fixed, a lot's going to happen. A lot's going to change. Change starts with me. The law makes free. Doing the word brings blessing. Control the tongue. Care for others. Keep yourself from worldly influences. Okay, have you picked one? Say amen. amen. All right, turn your card over on the back, and I want you to write one thing you're going to do tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, that will help you make that difference in your world. One thing. I listed off 22 things earlier and told you not to write them down because I was going so fast. But you can think of something that you can do with your hands, your feet, your life, your living, your outflowing in the public setting to get you on the path to making that difference. If you, yeah, if you can fit it to what you wrote on the front, then say, this is how I'm going to go about making that happen. I'm going to read my Bible more. I'm going to pray more. I'm going to visit the uh, sick more. I'm going to pick up a piece of trash off the parking lot more. I'm going to do something. I'm going to be intentional about doing something every day for seven days. Everybody say seven days. That will help me get to this one point that I can change. Now, if you're an overachiever and you're, and you're energetic and you're highly spiritual and you want to take all seven of them and write seven things that you're going to do every day for seven days, hallelujah. I'm just trying to make it the bar low so you can get started. I don't want to overwhelm you. I don't want to get you so bogged down and discouraged. I want you to, but I want you to grow. I want you to make a difference. I want you to come up Come on alongside and let's, let's work this thing out. Let's go together. I've got a lot of growing to do on all seven of these points, I'll be honest. But I'm going to keep working at it. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to check myself every day and say, what did I do today that's new for me? What did I do today that I don't normally do? That extraordinary measure, that extravagant giving, that intentional change I'm going to do. Amen? Amen. So, be the word, live the word, and the title of today's message is Living the Word of God. A Bible can seem so daunting to a lost and hurting person. It, if you just go to the hospital and find a sick person and lay a Bible on their chest and walk off, it's probably not going to be effective in that way. If the Lord tells you to do that, then do it. But typically, that's not going to help. But a soft touch, a kind word, a cup of water, a prayer. Do you know the Bible says heal the sick? It tells us in places to, to pray for the sick. But Jesus really just said heal the sick. You're a healer. And healing the sick and praying for the sick 
can sometimes be very different. Healing the sick might be going and checking their house and make sure everything's clean and disinfected. Healing the sick might be picking them up in your car and taking them to a place where they can get help. Healing the sick might mean putting a warm blanket on them or buying them lunch. Healing the sick might be a process. Amen? I'll say this. Praying for the sick is not really that hard. Not really that challenging because, I mean, God's the one that's going to do the answering. So we should all be doing that. Lay hands on, anoint with oil, pray the prayer of faith. Boom, 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 boom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's powerful. But healing the sick might take some time. It might take some effort. It might pull you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Stand with me if you would. Hear our prayer, O God. We call on you for help, for strength. We need to live your word. We need your word to be living in us and through us and gushing out of us, Lord, the love, the grace, the peace, the hope that only the world can know through your son, Jesus. Raise us up in the eyes of the people. Give us a platform where we can show the reality of true Christianity, true religion, undefiled. Lead us, teach us, help us. Be a reflection of you, oh God, so that when they see us, they don't see us, they see you. When they sense our presence, they don't just sense our spirit, but your spirit. When the fruit of our lives is no longer Paul fruit, but Jesus fruit, spirit fruit, good fruit, Hear us, Lord. Help us, Lord. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment. Oh, have your way, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. Oh, I give you my soul. your feet. Lord, order our steps. Place us in front of the hurting world. Place our feet in the position that we might represent you, Lord. Look at your hands. Lord, let these hands be the hands of a servant of Almighty God. Let these be the hands of Jesus. Lord, anoint these hands. Let these hands always be loving and kind and tender to those in need. Now just put your hand on your lips. Lord, let my tongue and my lips speak only your truth, your love, and your grace to the world. Let them hear you out of my mouth. Let me deliver the words of grace. Let me deliver the words of peace. Let me deliver kindness, love, and encouragement in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your eyes. Lord, don't let me see the things that would influence me in a worldly direction. Protect and guard my eyes, Lord, from seeing that which is evil. But let me only see that which is good. Touch your ears, Lord. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear the cry of the broken. 
Let me hear the cries of the hurting heart, Lord, even when they don't say anything, when there's nothing audible. Let me hear it in my spirit. Let my spirit hear from you, God. Speak to me. Speak to me. Speak to me, Lord. Now take out your wallet or your checkbook or your phone that you use to transfer money. Lord, use what resources that I have. Use my finances for your glory. Let me sow into the world. Let me be a giver. Increase my income that I might give in a greater measure. Let me never withhold from the poor, the hurting, the helpless, what you had intended for me to be a giver and a gift to my neighborhood and my friends and my neighbors. Use my finances for the glory of your kingdom, God. I rebuke the devourer off from my financial situation. I rebuke the devourer off of my checkbook. I refuse to let the enemy dictate my spending and debt put me in bondage. I refuse it, and I'm free to bless, to give, to serve in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. Amen. Freedom. The law makes you free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated real quick. We're going to give away our afghan. We just, this is a great, fun tradition every year, and I know the veterans appreciate it so much. How many of you have one of those afghans already? You've already won one and sitting in your house. There's one right there, one in that house, one in that house. There should be about 10 of those spread around by now, or 15. I don't know how many. Who's got the names, the buckets? Run up here, ushers with the bucket, run. Thank you, Laura. Amen. You can open that up. Lori, what year is this? Is this about 12 or 13? We know what year it is? So this is the 11th or 12th? One of these. Over 20 then. All right. Amen. This is full of worthy veterans' names. All right. I need somebody to draw this out. Sit down, Curtis. You, I want somebody young and cute. <laughs> Come up. There's, hey, that's it, Gail, you. Gail stood up. Reach up in there and grab one of those papers. Try to get just one. There you go, that's one. This one belongs to Carly Pennell. <laughs> Come on down. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Amen. Congratulations, Carly. I believe it's machine washable. But it's not cat proof. <laughs> I love you guys. Hey, if you're here for Pathways lunch, you'll be the first to go. So jump up, Pathways group, jump up, head over next door, get your food, and uh, we bless that food in Jesus' name. You can go ahead and start eating your lunch. We're going to have a great time over there with class number one of Pathways today. All of our leadership teams are dismissed to go and get in line for lunch as well. And the rest of you can pick up your phone and go to your app for Texas Roadhouse or Steak and Shake or wherever you want to go to lunch and get you an appointment. All right? I love you. Thank you. We'll see you next week. We'll see you Wednesday night at 7 right here in this room. One of the best prayer meetings you'll ever be in.